Hello, welcome to the Pandora Symphobia 4 effects video. This is the in-depth one, so I'll go through pretty much everything in the effects sections, which I'm calling two uh, effects, three clusters, six risers. They're all kinds of effects, so I thought I'd throw them all together. And we start with Brass, Horns and Bones, effects collection. In the blue here, we have three different slightly different types of effect all very similar they're an open uh, open horns and brass uh, horns and bones uh, and you each one you can go up pitch and up the top here we've got the muted version with mutes on it's confusing because mutes on brass tends to sound harsher not muted but I don't make the rules. Okay, so let's look at some of the controls which are common to everything. Uh, this is a, quite a vanilla patch, but you can still, there's an awful lot you can do in Pandora even with the vanilla patches. There's none of the fancy adaptive sync in this. So you've got this problem with this sort of patch that there's no release. You can't have a release trigger because the sound is so variable it wouldn't work. So all you can do is sort of do that fade. I'd quite like it if they you can if they could automate this so that when you take your finger off you whack up the reverb send because it sounds okay if you put that's not too bad um, but you don't want it to swamp everything so really when you take your finger off I'd like it to go like that maybe they can do that who knows um, so let's take a look in fact at the interface good a time as any first one this is a say it's fairly straightforward. You've kind of you're, this triangle means you're in sound design mode, and it means if there's a more little triangles in there, that means you can have it in this mode or the adaptive sync mode. This isn't adaptive sync mode; so it's only sound design. So here we go. You can reverse it. Let's make that in there. You can then change the speed. Looping, we're in loop mode, we'll go right down to super slow. Wild and crazy stuff you can do. Um, uh, so that's changed. Do you see this note here? That's the note I've been pressing. So it's changed it for that, but not for the others. You can set all and you can reverse everything, but it kind of doesn't remember your in position. I guess because each sample might be different, so you have to set that manually. Uh, so that's how that works. Um, and so you can take loop. Oh, you can't take loop off that. Maybe so. Well, well, then it's looped. That's your lot. Um, let's quickly look at the effects. Here's the reverb, which you heard a little bit of before. Limiter. Pretty crude, but if you need something, it uh, right here, there it is. Time we've talked about. Delay. Guess what that does? It adds a delay. Cut off is a filter. That's a low pass. A screamer is a distortion. And if you press here, you go into this expanded mode where you've got a few more controls. Oh, there's a stutter under here as well. Accelerate it. Which is fun. You can change it from square to sign to sawtooth to random. Um, pitch envelopes are quite fun. Or you can go up. Change the speed that it happens. Super slow. Uh, or a hold before it kicks in. Uh, there's the delay, and you've got. You can change the, you know, all that you'd expect with a basic delay. Uh, here's the cutoff. You can have it velocity control for filter enabled, use low value envelope. I think this uses this envelope, I think, um, to have that affect the cutoff as well there's the distortion there's a stereo width um it's the top end 
I'm whizzing through this pretty quickly. Um, for which I apologise. I tend not to muck around with the controls here much, but maybe if I get into the sound design thing more, maybe I will here. Here's the reverb, and you can change the size from smaller to bigger. Um, there's the limiter, and you've got an I'm feeling lucky button. Uh, and that's on pretty much everything. Like I said, depending on what mode you're in, you know, might have a different control there, but that's essentially that. So look at the mics at some other time for a slightly more percussive patch, because I think you can tell a little bit easier than something like this is just waving in and out. Um, did I do this? I can't remember if I did this. I could do it. Uh, down an octave. Down two octaves. Doubling. It's quite cool, isn't it? You can fix a velocity if you don't want to use a lower velocity sample or a higher velocity sample, say. And if you want to spread one note over the whole range. I have no idea why you want to do that, but if you want to do it, there it is. Um, and just to show you, uh, again, we've got many of these patches have got different um, snapshots. There we are, using that really low one. It's fun, isn't it? Yeah. These are these are ones that they've created. So there's quite a lot of you know there's quite a lot of sound designy things in here. If you want to um, just go crazy with it, let's move on though. As I'm just going to go through the main patches for this video, and let's go for suspense bends muted. There we go. And I could put it in downbeat mode, and we've got that super clever new thing where it all hit the downbeat. That drop hits on the downbeat, so I could do a quite quick one. One, two, three. One. Always hitting the downbeat. And what it's doing here, let me show you under the hood some of this cleverness. If we turn this off, what we have here is there are three, it's recorded four different lengths and you can cycle through them. That's the fastest. You're hearing it unaltered. There's no Time Machine Pro going under the, under the hood. Now this one's a bit quicker. And they're quicker again. Sorry, longer. They're going slow to long and this one will be the longest of all. Did it even say there or something? Yeah, hit point after, f yeah, so it's telling you at the bottom, hit point after five seconds, basically. But when you go into this mode, you've got four beats, you can do it over six beats, seven beats, eight beats. I'm not running the metronome, but it's still running at 120. Yeah. And if you go to, you go to extreme lengths, it will start changing colour, which is basically saying, hey, oh, I'm, in, uh, I'm going to some fairly extreme lengths here, so the quality may suffer. Still not terrible, is it? That's Time Machine Pro is a very good engine. And then this adds hit point after eight beats and one bar in 4-4, four, four. okay? Uh, So I'll click. It adds a bar, basically, onto whatever you put here in the beat. So it doesn't make much sense doing it like that, but if you just wanted two beats, and you actually wanted six beats, or... Get how that works so you can manually configure it if you want to be precise about it uh, i'm in love with this downbeat mode um and you can add a bar to that as well so two three four one two three it's going to take six beats 
So you get how that works. Um, what I'd love, uh, again, maybe in the new version, um, is to add half measures for these so that you could do it on a syncopated offbeat. And I think they said, yeah, they are working on that. So hopefully that'll come. Then you're not com always limited to this great new feature, but always being on the downbeat. You could switch it either way. I think that would be dead handy. <laughs> um... I'm back into beats mode now, so just go on four beats. That tends to work quite well for most things. Um, these higher ones, it's splitting half section, bends down, half section stays on the note. So with this, you can play a chord and it would still sound nice. It'll sound horrible if I do it to this half section. You probably wouldn't want to do that. Why would you? Those are all muted. We've got essentially the same patch here, so I'll give you a quick listen of the open uh, brass. Okay. Likewise. That's that. Okay, let's move on to something different, which is horns, bending note crescendo. That sounds like this. in uh, sync mode here um, there we are that's the white where it goes white should be the nicest section let's keep it on four it sounded all right to me um have a look there's only the one length in this one and a bending note swell where I think it will tail off yeah so you get the flash at the sort of peak of the swell and then it tails off afterwards Coming a little abruptly for me there, as it did there as well. There we go. And here we have an effects collection. Again, there's no sync on this. This will be like the first patch we looked at. These are all loop flutter tongues, looks like. Did you hear a click there? Again, Project Sam just warned me. This is, again, a pre-release version. This is version uh, 1.05, but actually it's not their problem. I remember now. There's a problem in Contact 611 that they said they're getting occasional clicks. Native instruments are on the case, and that will be fixed in the next version. I've only heard one or two. It happens very rarely, but... Work in progress, I think. That was one. Dynamic flutter tongue, very nice. Low ensemble growl. The simpler the patch is, obviously, the quicker they load. Oops. Runner. Click here. If I press down beat. Delaying with note 793 seconds. This is a short one, so it adds a delay if it's so long that the musically it won't work. So if I click it on beat one, it'll tell me there's a delay. But it hits the beat right. One, two, three. It's always hitting the beat right, but when there's nothing to play, you know, there's what else can it do? So Still works. Lovely. Um, I'll tell you what, while we're here, let's put this on the 
short one. Now let's go through the mic positions. So it's either or. You have the complete mix or you have the separate ones here. That's your close mic. Uh, let's turn that off again. Stage. Uh, far and wide. Mix away to your heart's content. Um, two things about this. Uh, again, I think it needs an expanded section. Mo like the effects has an expanded section. The controls, I haven't looked at that yet. We'll come back to that some other time. These all have expanded sections to show you more under the hood. Um, next time I go back here, I'll show you this one as well. I'm a bit all over the place. But there isn't one here, and I think it needs one. I think you you know you can't pan, you can't select an output from contact, so it's that's a known thing. I'm I'm almost certain that that will happen in if not the next version, the one after. I'd, I'm guessing on which version, but but I know that they want to do it, and that's a quite an important thing. Patches with the synth in as well. I would kind of like that on a fader and to route that to a separate output. And also the ability that to send to reverb, it would be lovely to have an aux send so you can pick which mic, and particularly with the synth. Sometimes you might want a synth to go to reverb or delay, but not the other stuff. So I suspect we're going to see uh, something a little more featureful in time. As it is, this works, it does the job, but you know it's a little bit limited. Back to our mix. Um, if we go under the hood here, Adaptive sync, uh, to, yeah, that's not very, uh, let's show you something with a bit more, go right, okay. Sync method, use sample set offset to sync. What did that say again? All right, to sync cue otherwise. Oh, this forces you, you know that delay thing? That's saying, right, always use Time Machine Pro, even in situations where it might sound ridiculous. Um, this doesn't use any Time Machine Pro, it always does an offset. So if you're a purist and you want to have this feature but without any stretching, I guess this is the way to go. Automatic just chooses the best thing. I just leave it in automatic and it always seems to work. Hit point offset. So I was saying you can only hit the downbeat, but you can manually tweak it here. A random point of 300 milliseconds after the downbeat um, so it can't do it in measures uh, but it can do it in milliseconds release after hit point envelope until end so yeah either it will use your settings here when you release or not that's what's going on under that hood and since we're doing controls pitch bend range round robin you can stack things turn it on and off velocity trimming so you can eliminate velocities you don't want, velocity offset, range trimming. Trim left and trim right. Whee, there you go. See what that's doing? Uh, I don't think I've probably touched them at all. Um, right. Let's move on. Dum -dum 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 -dum. Low ensemble wide. Anyone thinking what I'm thinking? Different variations. This says to me close encounters. With old little boss's name getting dragged through the cat flap. Um, they're great. So you can end these. So there's quite a lot of patches like this. Look out, they don't always correlate, but very often if you get a um, a blue on the left and a yellow on the right, that means that you can play, say, a D here, and then you want to get out of it, hit the D here, and that will get you out of it with a little blat. It actually is quite neat, the release on that. So that's a normal release, and if I want to hit a blatted end, you can do that. Um, did I go? Through, oh, I didn't go through every single one, but you get 
the idea. They're really tasty. Beautiful. Trumpets Wild Textures. Muted on the right. And sometimes it does this long short, sometimes it's open and muted. Now right, wow, okay. Um, piano. These are smashed pianos. These are long endings. And these are the short endings. They're tasty. Ghostly bending. the curious thing here. Oh, it's got release sample, isn't it? Sounds nice when I take the finger off that. Release trails for turn them off. Yeah, that's what the releases are doing. Tasty. It's working very nicely. Ghostly bending sums it up all right, doesn't it? Ah! Uh, terrific. Ghostly crescendo. This is a sync patch. So you saw where it flashed, where it hit the peak intensity. That one stops on the downbeat. So I already played that one, haven't I? All highly usable. Uh, ghostly rising. Hmm, this could have gone in the riser section, could it? And again, same deal. These are over eight beats. Um, let's not do that. Let's do the damn beat thing. Two, three, four. So this is one that you might want a longer one. Say. Uh, so let's take this over. There we go. Over eight beats in total because I hit on the first beat. So one, two, three, four. And bam. It's very clever. Very clever. I won't do it on every single patch because you'll get the idea. I haven't heard it screw up, basically. It's really good. Um, have I had anything I missed there? Woo, lovely. That was a short version. These are the long ones. Because I'm so stupid, I would like a mode wherein you keep it in downbeat mode, but like I say, when it when it um it sort of sometimes only previews very short versions, I'd like it to sort of revert to whatever you've got set in beats when the door's not running. So you can because that tends to be set at the typical usable point and then when you moment you press play it goes into its downbeat mode but these are niceties um ponticello crescendo ponticello means scratchy and edgy sonically doesn't it 
Very distinctive sound that. I can't remember the bowing technique. My niece is a real string player and she will have a go at me for forgetting. Use the viola. Anyway. So this is one of those, I demoed it in one of the intro patches, didn't I? So you hold that nice and gently, and then... Yeah, a sort of a soft sustain, quite a few are like that. Very good. Scary repetitions. Scary, 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 scary. couple of clicks there, weren't they? I'm glad they didn't mention that or else I'd be a bit worried. Um, and then a sustain. No. It's a swell. On this occasion. I play a little cluster of my own. up here so you know there's quite a lot of patches but you'll see in something like this there's sort of these could be three separate patches couldn't they in in another library so there's a lot hidden away here wild horror do you like horror films i'm not really a horror fan but I use this kind of stuff in comedies all the time because they're often parodying horror. Well, I am. Uh, I've never made a real horror film. Hmm. And a wild run. I So we're about to go into the wind's high run. It's sort of... Uh... Let's do a thing here. Let's now double click. So let's load up the winds on top of it and see if they match up. I will need to change the MIDI channel, which is here, so that it's on the same one. Okay. Ha, ha, ha. They're on different octaves, aren't they? So here I have to. Is this going to work? Oh, this is just a wild. Yeah, they are. They've put them differently, so you can have one or either. Listen to that! It worked. Yes. Beautiful. And these are synced as well. This is great. Bang. Or one, two, three. Now. <laughs> that is just the wrong one. Okay, one, two, three. Now, what a twit! Okay, here we go. Right, one, two, three. Now, there you go. Do it after two. One. That's great that they are completely orchestrated in. You know, it was real. They were orchestrated well, played with precision, so you can layer those perfectly. That is nice, isn't it? Um, yeah. Well, we've sort of been through that on the intro video, and the winds and the strings are, as you can hear, the sort of same, but strings. They're really nice. Like them very much. Wild textures. You're not sure of wild screaming things are you oh I just realised of course I've skipped Wild Run Winds because we've heard that that almost fly the bumblebee <laughs> woohoo that's loud So flutter tongue, legato, not how we play it. I mean, they're joining the notes when they play it, not when I play it. Mm -hmm. 
Brill. Uh, low growl. Uh, oh yeah, not loaded. Sorry. Another one of the short ones. Hard ending versus the swell down here. So that's the main effects section. Um, don't go anywhere. We're not stopping. Uh, now we're going to clusters. Um, horns and bones. Dynamic chaos crescendo sync dot n k i. Right. Okay. what the difference between these two blues is. Hit point after four beats. Same. Can't tell the difference, to be honest. What am I missing? Oh, yeah. It wavies. The, the, the right-hand ones are wavy, aren't they? That's... Nice. Uh, horns crescendo. Listening to this in uh, on headphones, and that's very wide. The, you can hear the individual horn players right across the width. It's nice. That's just look. Look what it's done. It's switched to close. We're hearing all the close mics. If you say, oh, no, 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 there you go. So that's what you get. I wonder why they did that. versions. You can hear the detail a lot more in the close, can't you? Maybe that's why they did it. Beautiful! Low ensemble wide. Crescendo swell. Okay. Crescendo or a swell. Beautiful. These are sync patches. You've got the idea of the sync by now. Trust me, it's great. All of these dead handy that you can just hit them. Do you want to hear what that sounds like on the different mics? That's it. Strings, high collection, collection of clusters, a cluster, oh no, I'm not going to say that, it's going to come out very wrong. They're lovely, aren't they? So this is velocity based. Um, unison to cluster. Cluster to unison when you give it a whack. Nice. It's all quite lost, isn't it? I mean, the show lost, not... They don't know what they're doing. God, it's great. <gasps> Very much indeed. It is very good. Tutti. Tutti fruity, I'm sure. Uh, this, actually, I used in me demo, didn't I? In me intro. Did I? I can't remember what I did now. Uh, so, you've got a couple of percussion layers here. Let's turn them both off. 
with the Grand Casa. A roll and a timpani roll, I think. And one thing you can't do is play them without the cluster, but why would you? Because you've got separate patches if you want to do that, so. Um, that's another sync patch. Let's move on to Dominion U. Why do I talk like that? Idiot. Different lengths. Okay, so let's. That's the shortest. to the short. So here we have the Grand Casa and the Carleno. A little layered Carleno for you. Uh -huh. There's a separate Carleno patch somewhere uh, if you want to get into that, but that's not a layer in it. Um, what we got going on up here? Uh... So if you want to keep that sustaining for a long time, you can just Ease in the C on the yellow with the C on the uh, blue. Because so, I mean, these are really useful because so often with effects, they just kind of, you, it sounds like you're butt joining sound effects together if you're not careful. So doing this is a great way to, and then you can have another Symphobia take over with your full orchestration or something at that point. It just helps really join things together, I think, doesn't it? Schwarzando. Maybe these stupid voices. Right, okay. Um, Schwarzando crescendo. Goes like this. No, it doesn't. It goes like this. Yep. Again, you've got no sustains up there. Uh, short clusters. Oh, right, it's loading quite a lot of samples in there, isn't it? Beautiful. Let's just switch this to CC for the... Oh, so articulation switching, sorry, not dynamics. So it's switching the length on CC1. I'll put that back to key switch and CC crossfade dynamics. It's all there customizable on the individual patch basis. Uh, and a swell. And I'm sure it will be swell. <laughs> It is swell. So they're giving us some more of those longs on the yellows here. Just playing different velocities here. Uh, clusters, wins. God, how long have I been talking? 37 minutes. No, less than that in your time. Great. So they're going through the little velocity layers there for you. Each one getting more and more demented. Um, winds low crescendo. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't like? 
like a contrabassoon in the morning. <laughs> uh. Believe me, if you're tired of my nonsense, I certainly am. However, we have something marvellous to listen to, so why well, I just shut up? I've done that. I'll shut up on this patch, I promise. And we have different short lengths. Uh, up here we do. Super long. Wowzers. And a swell. Excellent, excellent, excellent. I think we can all agree that's very well covered for clusters. And now risers will be the last thing uh, that we'll look at in this video. There's these other sections, don't forget. The tonal section, the pulses, extra percussion. I'm throwing all the effects together here, so uh, they're all in one place. Uh, string downers, how about that? Start with some downers. thing on the last one it bugged me Noon. come on get your copy of rx out and get rid of that nice haven't done it for a while come on <laughs> that was crazy Let's add a bar to that. Uh... One, two, three, four. Bang. Bang. Is this all still making sense? I think when you did it, that was crazy fast. I did that one. Good in that time. Huge collection here. Beautiful. Uh, this is the one I played. Uh, so just for completeness, I'll go a couple of quick goes through here. P to FF. I find this patch quiet for some reason. Just turn it up. I can hear a little bit of stretching there, I think. I think it's the first time I've heard it. That's the mid one. Those are the fastest. Okie doke. Um, and there's... These are the different... Uh, what do you call it? The different... Uh, 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 dynamic ranges. String riser P. You just need a little subtle riser in the background rather than some honking great big thing. Um, Arco, Arco. Get the idea here? Same thing, different dynamics. Um, on different ends of the scale. We have harmonics as well. Or a soft one. Oh, I like that. I want to put 
put some verb on it though. Um, it kind of ended, didn't it? the end it's really nice for the quiet ones normally risers are always bigger than your face and you don't always need them like that do you no you don't salpont trim scratchy trim god sounds good very different note oh Come on, native instruments, sort them out. Great. Um, and the last, a basic trem. Basic sounds dismissive. I didn't mean it that way. Sorry to every string player who played it. Hey, click again. So you can hear it's definitely a playback thing. It's not a recording, those clicks. So, you know, it is what they say. It's just an engine thing. There we go. Okay, that's the... Uh, you've made it. Well done. Um, uh, so that's the end of the first video. The second one, I'm going to be looking at tonal, uh, pulses and percussion. Uh, to, that's going to be a whole other side of the library, but we are pretty much done with the effects. Um, as I say, there's there's a few features that I'd like to see in it uh, in a upcoming version. Um, the mic mixer is is kind of basic. Um, the few little niceties would uh, would be great, but even as it is in version 1.0, it's kind of I've got a few effects libraries and. Often it's the overwhelming sense of so many different patches in so many different places and you can't find them. I think this is well organised. I think the descriptive names are good. And I think it's so easy to use with the hitting on the beat, which you so often want to do with these things. I think it sort of goes to the... Certainly it'll go to the top of mind if I ever need something like that. Even above the other symphobias, uh, it's like they all seem a little bit... Well, they're great, but they're, so, they're inflexible, aren't they? Um, so it's it's a lovely thing and the sound is the sound that we all know and love so there we go okay that's enough final thoughts for this video and I'll have more final thoughts I'm sure in the other ones that will sound quite similar to that okay thanks for bearing with me um, and I'll see you on the next one